When natural gas comes up out of the ground, you have a, a pipe coming, going into the ground, and when natural gas is coming out, natural gas is composed of hydrocarbons, hydrocarbons plus CO2. So this is hydrocarbons plus CO2. And, and uh, this CO2 content can be 10 to 20 percent of the natural gas can be CO2. And it's this that we're trying to limit. And so what we found is this carbon material, so that if we flow this into a tube that has this carbon material in it, is we can flow in this mixture and out only comes the hydrocarbon, hydrocarbon, and the CO2 stays within the tube. And the way this happens at the molecular level is that you have these cavities, there's very small cavities inside this carbon material, and these small cavities might have a sulfur atom or a nitrogen atom. And this sulfur atom attacks CO2, and then what happens is you now get this sulfur atom with a CO2 molecule on it. And now this CO2 molecule attacks another CO2 molecule. And this will continue so that you now have sulfur atoms, but now you have this polymer of CO2 that just builds up in here. So inside this channel, you get this polymer of CO2. So you've gone from a gaseous state of CO2 to a polymeric state of CO2. And in this polymeric state of CO2, now we've taken a very large volume and confined it to a small volume. And all of these are reversible reactions so that when we release the pressure, it goes back the other way and we start evolving CO2 on the way back out. And so at one point under the high pressure of it coming out, we polymerize CO2. And then when we want to empty this, we just release the pressure and send it right back down hole, the CO2 right back down hole to where it's been for millions of years.